everybody. I'm Alice K. Recklehouse from Threshold of Hineni and the Widow Recklehouse. And I have my mom here with me. And um, the, her name's Lynn Hanish. Mom, do you want to say anything to everybody? Uh, I have a wonderful daughter named Alice K. who is right there. And uh, see the I'm halo? Proud of her mom. <laughs> 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 okay, so today we're going to be talking about prayer walking for normal people. Um, if you have heard me talk about my mom or you've seen um, any of the interviews that I've done with her, sometimes we talk about her prayer walks. She's walked all the way across the U.S. She's walked both coasts and um, praying, and she's prayer walked a lot of other places too, but we realize that that's like too much for most people to do. <laughs> most of you can't just walk out on your family. Like my dad used to tell people that his <laughs> wife walked out on him when she was on these prayer walks. Um, <laughs> most of you can't do that. And so we just want to talk about what like everyday normal people can do in the area of prayer walking. And one of the groups that I'm in, um, not one of my groups, but one of the groups that I'm in, we were actually talking about prayer walking recently. And so um, I think that this would be a really cool thing just to be able to share like some ideas for how you prayer walk. And also don't leave us if you don't walk. Okay, like I can't walk, you guys. I have mobility issues. There are other ways that you can prayer walk without actually walking. And for sometimes, like if it's really hot, it, it might not be safe for you to go out and walk. And so there's other things that you can do that are kind of like prayer walking. So we're going to talk about that. And then also at the end, stay to the very end because we are going to show you something that you can get for free that's really, really cool. Okay, so. <laughs> Mom, first of all, what is prayer walking? Prayer walking involves uh, being able to pray for people. Like I pray around this community from time to time uh, where I live. I live in a senior community and I walk around and I pray for the people. If I know who lives in a home, I'll pray specifically for them by name. If I don't know of them, I just pray for whoever's in that home. And sometimes I meet people along my way and I'll talk to them and I'll say, is there something I can pray for you mm -hmm. about? And a lot of times they respond with yes. And I know right after I moved here, uh, one gal, the second day I was walking, I think it was, she stopped her car. She was on her way to work and she stopped her car. And, and I told her, asked her if there was something I could pray for her. And I have been praying for that for a long time. And she finally just recently shared that she had an answer to that prayer. Wow, that's so, so cool. that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. And so what are the advantages to pray to prayer walking as opposed to just sitting at home praying for people? <clears throat> well, actually getting out there and seeing things and meeting people and talking to people or uh, feeling what's going on in an area is makes such a difference because you have a better idea of how to pray sometimes just by uh what you see in a yard uh you know when you're not in the senior community here because we don't see that much that tells us that much about it but like in other communities you see children's toys in a yard you know there are children there and so you pray for those parents mm -hmm. uh and how they're raising their children you pray for those children that they will be uh grow up learning to uh, be obedient children and to love God and things like that. So you can tell just by the things you see in a house, mm -hmm. a meticulously clean yard and such uh, just gives you ideas of how to pray. There probably aren't children right, <laughs> yeah. and different things like that. So, or maybe you see flowers, real pretty flowers, and means they've got a gardener in there mm -hmm. that loves somebody that loves the garden. And uh, so that's an area you can pray for them or mm -hmm. begin to talk to them if you see them out in the yard. Yeah. And you can see things about people's um, religious beliefs. You know, if you see some Christian symbols, then, you know, to pray for their faith and everything. And if you see something that's very anti-Christian, then that's definitely something to pray for as well. Bumper stickers on cars. Oh, yeah, those are very helpful. What if you pass by a house and you really don't have any clues for what to pray? What do you do then? Then you just pray that God will, he can see and you, you give it to him and you say, okay, Lord, 
you know what's going on in this home, what they need and what they don't need. Mm -hmm. Um, And I just pray that you will meet those specific needs. And, and then you trust God with it. Yeah, That's he knows what they need. <laughs> he doesn't yeah. really need us to tell him, but for some reason, <laughs> so he better. likes it when we do, you know, but because yeah. um, it's it's a way mm-hmm. of having conversation with him and everything. But right. yeah, yeah. And how do you feel like you benefit from prayer walking? I benefit from prayer walking because because uh, I get to meet people for one thing and share with people and Uh, they share with me and I share with them. So we share with each other, but being able to pray for somebody just, it makes me draw closer to God because I'm talking to God and talking to God is an intimate relationship with God. And so when you're in prayer, you are in an intimate relationship and it just makes you come closer to God. And it's exciting. Then when you, if you do see answers, sometimes you will Many times you will not see answers. You will never right. know yeah. what happens. Well, but... you will know probably in heaven. Yes, that's true. You'll get to meet those people. Jesus will introduce you yeah. to somebody and say, you prayed for this woman. And you're going, uh, she doesn't look familiar to me. Well, she was in the greenhouse you know, yeah. <laughs> or something, you know, and he's going to introduce you to that person. And they're probably just going to start weeping. And you're going to start weeping because of the answers to prayer, right. because you prayed for them. Yeah. Yeah. That's just really cool. Yeah. And I, I can experience, I can tell of one experience when I first started doing any prayer walking, it was through our church in Santa Clara mm-hmm. and um, the church was having a prayer ministry around the neighborhood. And so they sent us out two by two to pray uh, at certain sections of the neighborhood. We each had certain sections oh, wow. and uh Many times we would see people out and and dad and I walked together for that. We did that together and Mm -hmm. we saw people out in their yards and we would talk to them and ask how we could be praying for them. And many of them gave us ways. One guy, I will never forget. He said, don't pray for me. I won't have anything to do with religion. And that gave uh, you something to pray for. (laughs) Away from there, knowing what we were going to be praying (laughs) Right. And, so, and we would see him again and he was always friendly but if we said anything about prayer he clammed up and would turn his back on us and uh so i have no idea if he's ever come to the lord but we sure prayed and just a tip out there for those of you who don't want people praying for you the worst thing you can say is don't pray for me because we <laughs> will pray for you <laughs> you've just you've just told us that you need us to pray for you so we will sorry (laughs) that's probably not true of anybody watching this i don't know why you would be watching this if you don't want people praying for you so (laughs) okay so we'll talk a little bit more about strategy and stuff in a while but how did you get started prayer walking uh that was the first prayer walking i had done excuse me was with that uh particular church but then, um, and I wasn't really a walker at that point. That was probably in my, I was in my 30s then, I think. And um, I didn't really get into walking until I was in my late 30s and early 40s. And then I had started walking because a doctor told me I needed to walk. <laughs> and, right. She misunderstood and, him, so, too. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> so I walked three times a week, 20 minutes a day. And just, you know, keep going from there. And he didn't tell me when to stop going. So I really kind of carried, got carried away with it. But <laughs> and and grandma about. was living with us at the time. She was in a wheelchair. Uh, yeah. That's and right. Mom pushed she her was... 20 miles sometimes. And grandma <laughs> loved it, of course. <laughs> we, we had fun. That was such a bonding time for my mom and I, because, uh, you know, she couldn't take care of herself. And, and I knew that we couldn't get do it together even if we just stayed in the house the whole time Mm -hmm. we needed to get out get fresh air and stuff so we started walking and um it was an experience for both of us that we will you know we've always been blessed by Mm -hmm. yeah my mom has been gone now for many years but (laughs) yeah but but that was that was was excellent yeah. 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 She loved that. And mom took her on trails in her 
in her, I was going to say her Volkswagen, her wheelchair. <laughs> wow. That was quite a Volkswagen. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. So you also have to understand my grandma was very adventurous. Um, at church, when my brother and I were teenagers, um, she would ask us to take her out to the parking lot and pop wheelies in her wheelchair. <laughs> So we would run around the parking lot, you know, popping wheelies. I think actually, I think we were in our twenties. Daryl may have been a teenager, but I was, I was college yeah. age. And yeah, so, so, so yeah, she was a little different, but, <laughs> but mom took her on really, really long walks. I mean, all the way from Santa Clara to San Francisco, not the one to when you went overnight, but on the, no, you didn't do that with her on any of those? Uh, no, I didn't. didn't oh, take okay. Her. Oh, I thought you did. Okay. I, I took her in the planning of them sometimes. Okay. Okay. That's what it was. Portions of it. Yeah. With, but okay. yeah. Yeah. So that, that was really, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. And she so. was, she was a lot of fun to walk with. And I can remember one time when we were walking and we passed by this lady and this lady said, Whoa, she says, that's the first time I've ever been passed by a wheelchair. <laughs> for her she was so cute <laughs> yeah you know i've realized if i was in a wheelchair i don't think i'd want to be pushed as fast as grandma did <laughs> yeah yeah we didn't walk slow i didn't you know i walked yeah. fast so <laughs> yeah yeah i'm a little slower now but <laughs> yeah well she even had a couple soccer players from my college carry her down a bunch of steps one time in her wheelchair yeah <laughs> I yeah. would have a heart attack and she didn't even <laughs> blanch at that. <laughs> That's right. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. So were you mm -hmm. prayer walking at that time? Did you, were you and grandma praying at all or? No, we weren't, but we were meeting people and uh, talking with them. And sometimes prayer came up. It was just kind of a natural thing for us. And so uh while it wasn't officially prayer walking, mm -hmm. uh, we did do some of that. It was kind of so, the development of it. Yeah, it was kind of. of the development of it. And yeah. it, uh, it put a lot of ideas in my mind, I, I know. Um, I didn't see them clearly at that point, but uh, that came about later. But Yeah, uh, yeah. I was realizing the other day, I think that grandpa influenced me in that way. Mm. when he would take me walking around the farm praying mm -hmm. and I wasn't allowed to say anything. I had to be very quiet when he was talking to God, but I got to hear him talking to God. So that's kind of how, one, part of how I learned to pray. And then when he was done praying, he'd say, okay, little Alice, what questions do you have? Because <laughs> he knew I had tons of questions. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, you know, so it's like, I think, you know, there was that influence too. I hadn't really thought of that before as being part of prayer walking mm -hmm. until recently. But yeah, so um, just very, very briefly, because we're going to talk about this in more detail in the future, but what are some of the bigger prayer walks that you've done? Uh, the biggest one that I've done uh, was from Washington State up in the northeast, northwest corner, all the way down to Florida Keys in the southeast corner. Did you ever go back and tell your doctor that told you to walk for 20 minutes that you've done this? <laughs> I did. I oh, good. That and he, he seemed to think I wanted a donation. Oh, and oh, no. I thought, oh, no, I didn't mean for that. And, but he, I don't know. He was pretty, well, he oh, was that's... different. Yeah. Okay. Well, so because I wanted him to know that I actually listened to him, right? <laughs> and he and he never told you when to stop. So you just mom just keeps going, and you know, until yeah. somebody tells her it's time to stop. Mom, it it took my husband dying before she stopped walking on her prayer on her big prayer walks. Yeah, because <laughs> she was in the middle of walking the other direction across the U.S. Um, when Bill died, and so she and Dad came and stayed with me, and then. My uncle died, and so they went and stayed with my aunt. And then my dad was not doing well, so um, so, so I stayed with him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you're planning to start walking again, right? Prayer walking again. Yes, I am. Uh, God's been really bringing that to me through other people who have said, uh, you know, I want to help you uh, get back to that and finish up that walk. And uh, I had thought I'm probably through, mm -hmm. but people came to me. I didn't go to them. And that's been interesting. So 
Uh, so God's beginning to work in that. So I'm hopeful that next year I'll be able to get out there and do some of that, but I'm going to do it in shorter segments. Good. Okay. And we'll talk about that in another video. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to, even though I brought up your longer walks, I want to keep this to what's like more for normal people. Um, so what if somebody can't walk or it's too hot outside or they have a whole bunch of little children and it's hard for them to walk with little children? Um, although I walked with my little children, <laughs> um, but it is hard for um, my, my kids were trained from the time my oldest daughter, when she was two, walked six miles. Okay. So that just kind of gives you an idea. Um, so they were trained from the time they were, they were little, but I know a lot of people can't do that. So that's okay. What are some ways that you can prayer walk without walking? Uh, you can prayer walk in your, from your home uh, just by thinking of places or people uh, that need prayer and be praying for them. I know I have read stories of people who have been bedridden and they pray for individuals across the nation. And people send them, um, sometimes send them letters. They hear about her and send her letters. I don't wow. even know if she's still alive now, but <clears throat> I read about that quite a while ago. I never met that lady. I would have loved to have met her. That's really cool. But, uh, but I've heard of others like that too. So yeah. So there are many ways you can uh, be driving in your car and be praying um, and pray for people you see along the way. Mm -hmm. Walking through a grocery store, um, you can be praying for people there because you see a lot of things going on in a grocery store. Little children crying or mm -hmm. pulling at their parents or whatever, or old people kind of bent over walking through the store. Right. You know, I just thought of something that a lot of people may not realize is you can pray in your heart without praying out loud. So That's when you're right. walking through the grocery store, you're not probably right. praying out loud. <laughs> you don't have to even move your lips. <laughs> and you can you can pray for people because God can hear your thoughts and he knows what those are. In fact, Psalm 139 says he knows our thoughts even before we think them. So you can you can just pray that way. You don't have to pray out loud. So just in case anybody was wondering about my mom walking through a grocery yeah. store, Lord, yeah. I praise you for this person and help her children and blah, blah, you know, whatever. Yeah, she's yeah. not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes you know because i i have walked when i was able to walk i have walked my neighborhoods and so i know i know my whole community really well because i used to walk all over my town um and so i'll sit on my porch where i can see a lot of the town i'm on a hill and i can see a lot of the town and i will pray that way kind of like imagining walking down those and I can remember a lot of the houses and I'll be praying for people that way. You can also, if you don't know your community really well, you can say, okay, Lord, I'm going to pray for my neighborhood. I'm going to pray for my community. I'm going to pray for the schools. And if you know the individual schools, you can pray for them. You can pray for the police. You can pray for the firemen, for the hospital. I have a hospital right across the street for me. So that's a big thing for me to pray for. Um, and just, you know, think through the different things that are in your community or your town or your city and pray that way. Yeah. Yeah. And, and how do you, how do you prayer drive? Uh, as you drive, you can be praying for things along the way um, that you see businesses as well as individuals and, and people that you see walking along. Um, when I, we were driving through Minnesota uh, during the walk, but it was a part we were driving at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were in the big city part and there were a lot of people crossing the street. And my immediate thought was, pray for these people. Um, they need God. And, you know, probably two thirds of them didn't know God, maybe more maybe than that. More, you, know, yeah. you just don't know. And so you pray that uh, for them, mm -hmm. that they will meet God in a way that will 
cause them to want that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Right. Well, and also, you know, while you're either driving or like I said, I live across the street from a hospital, so I hear sirens quite, quite a bit. Um, that can also be something that just triggers prayer for you. You can get yourself into the habit of stopping and just praying for the people who are being transported to the hospital. Or if you've got a fire truck going by, it might be a fire, it might be something else, but just praying for those first responders. When you're stuck in traffic because of an accident, instead of complaining about how horrible it is, you know, consider that there's somebody who's hurt, um, or maybe they're not hurt, but their car is wrecked. And that can be really traumatic for people and can be very difficult and they need prayer or somebody who died. My husband died in a, in a car accident and traffic was held up for hours because of that. And I hope that there were people, well, I know that there were because there were four men who stopped and they went to him while he was dying and they were praying for him. And so, so sorry. <laughs> Yeah. So you can really minister to somebody that way. Yeah. And it helps me as his widow to know that people were doing that too. Absolutely. And I've had experiences where I've been in the hospital, uh, for short hospital stays, and uh, have prayed for the people around me, uh, especially in emergency rooms. Uh, people come in for all different reasons. Some of them are very serious. Some of them not so serious. Mm -hmm. And it's a good time to be praying for them. I pray for the doctors and the nurses. And I will not forget the one experience I had uh, probably about a year and a half ago. And I ended up in the hospital emergency room. And it was a couple of nights before they actually had a room open for me in the hospital itself. And, uh, but during that time, I was praying for all different ones. And then when I was moved to a room, uh, the nurse that was taking care of me, I shared with her that I prayed a lot and that if she had anything that I could pray specifically for, well, she came in and visited me a couple of times when she didn't have so much to do and asked me to pray specifically. Wow. Um, one morning I was awakened by a technician who had come in very early in the morning to run a test on me. It was the only time he had that he could fit me in. So uh, he gave me a moment to get awake, to go use the bathroom <laughs> okay. and come back and get settled, and, uh, which I appreciated. He was very nice, but I also shared with him and he was able to, we were able to talk the whole time he was running the test uh, and and it was just a beautiful experience because he was so appreciative. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, he just, he, he kept saying, yes, oh, here's something you can pray for. And so, uh, you know, we just had a neat experience. And another time, oh my, it was so beautiful. A lady had been called out of church to run a test, to come run a test on me. Oh, wow. Now, neither of these times was I very sick or anything. Uh -huh. But the doctors were just making sure. And so they called this one technician out of church on a Sunday morning to come run this test on me. And so she did. And throughout that time, we shared. And she, you know, she was a Christian. <laughs> and we prayed for each other. And we had such Sweet. a beautiful time of fellowship as well as praying for each other. Yeah. I have, whenever I have to go to the hospital, which isn't often, <laughs> uh, I realize, I have realized that God puts me there for a purpose. And that purpose is to pray. Mm -hmm. People in hospitals need prayer so yeah. much more than a lot of people. Yeah. If you're visiting in the hospital, as you walk down the hall, just walk slowly and pray for the people in each room. And pray for the nurses and the doctors and the technicians, the janitors, the cafeteria workers, you know, all those people really need prayer too. Um, and mom just brought up something that I wanted to mention too, about asking people how you can pray for them. She's talked about that quite a few times in this conversation. Usually, I mean, she talked about one guy who said he didn't want to be prayed for, but usually I have found people are very, very receptive to being prayed for and not necessarily Christians. But if you ask, can I pray for you? And how can I pray for you? Oh, it's just beautiful because they'll just open up to you and oftentimes start crying because nobody's asked them. 
That's how they right. can be prayed for. And, you know, you've showed that you care and that God cares. Um, I'm going to put a link below for a book by Ed Silvoso, where he talks about this, mm -hmm. about asking people, you know, what they need prayer for. And he calls those their felt needs. It's what they realize that they need prayer for. People don't say, please pray for my salvation, <laughs> you know, but they say, you know, I'm having financial problems or something. And when they see God answer those prayers, they're much more open to the gospel, either from you sharing it or somebody else that God brings along their path. But that is really, really one way to start planting the seeds of the gospel with people. Um, it, it, Mom, is there anything else that you want to share right now in this segment? I was just going to say that the other day I had a housekeeper come in. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was telling me about her family situation. And she has a runaway daughter who she's been looking for. Oh. And her daughter is, is old enough to be on her own. She's 18. But she said, the main thing I want, I want to know that she's safe. Um, she can live wherever she wants. I just want her to know that I care and that I need her to contact me. Mm. Wow. So I her, I'll be praying for that. And she appreciated that. Mm -hmm. And I will follow up on it because she'll be back another time. And I plan to follow up on that. Oh, that's and really good. That's yeah. So. Yeah. So I know that a lot of what we're talking about isn't about actually walking, but these are things that you can do for your, you know, for your own prayer life that you can use. Um, and you can use a lot of these things that we've talked about while you're prayer walking also. Um, I also wanted to mention for some of you who like, maybe you're, you're not used to coming up with your own prayers. You don't know how to, how to pray. Just say, Lord, I, I really want to pray for these people. You know what their needs are please just meet whatever their needs are and you can pray for them that way. Um, if you're Catholic, you can pray the rosary as you're walking. You can, you know, as you're thinking about different mysteries of the rosary, think of what the fruits of those mysteries are like, um, like Jesus being scourged at the pillar of the fruit is purity. God might put you at that point in the rosary as you're walking through this neighborhood because there's a need for purity there. And so you can be praying the rosary and praying for purity um, for those people. And, and those are things too, you guys, any of those things, now I'm, now I'm talking to everybody, not just Catholics, but think of the fruit of the spirit. You know, just memorize that list of the fruit of the spirit or write it down and take that card with you and just systematically as you go through a neighborhood, pray for those fruit of the spirit for that neighborhood. Um, that can be just a great way to pray if you can't think of what to pray. Um, if you read your newspaper, your local newspaper, it'll also give you a lot of ideas of what to pray about. So before we go, I had said that we have something free to share with you. Mom and I both have it here. So, <laughs> so in one of mom's walks, which was the one that she talked about briefly about walking from um, the northwest corner of Washington State down to Key West, Florida. So the longest way possible to go across the U.S. Um, and she prayer walked that. So this book is about that. It's called Putting a Face on, on America, The Great American Journey. And um, oh yeah, here's, she walked, she did the whole thing. My daughter, Samantha, let's see, there we go, there's Sam. She did most of it with mom. And then Joni, here in the middle. Um, that's Joni, right? Yeah. Joni in the middle um, was their driver and she walked some of it also. So that was just, it was really cool. How long did it take you to walk that mom? Uh, 14 and a half months. Yeah. And how many miles? It was 4,026 and a half miles. Do you remember how many steps? Uh, we figured it out one time and it was in the millions. But yeah, yeah. Okay. So anyway, so this book talks about their experiences. It talks about people that they met. There are lots of pictures in it. There are some like drawings, but there's also like, okay, mine doesn't, it's hard for me to show here with my virtual background, but there's pages and pages of color pictures of the people that she talked about in the book. And we'll talk about the details of this more later in another video, but I just wanted to let you know, she's giving these away, you guys. I mean, this is a nice book. This is one that could be easily a coffee table book. And it's really interesting for you to read as an adult by yourself, but also it's, it's rated G, right, mom? Yep. So you can give it to your kids to read. And that's fine. There we go. Now you can see the pictures better than me showing it. But also you can read it as a family. 
Um, it's a great book to read as a family, and it will give you a lot of ideas about prayer walking, too, as well as just being a really cool story to read. So did you want to say anything more about it, Mom? Don't miss the uh, the appendices also at the okay. end, because there's a series of appendices written by people who did parts of the walk, and those are really good, too. Very good. Yeah, very good. Um, also, I wrote a homeschool guide for it, which I'm not sure. I believe it's still in my in my email. So if any of you are homeschooling and you would like to have that, I can't promise it, but let me know if you're interested. I will look for it and I'll just send it to you for free also. Now, what we are asking, though, is because shipping does cost something, is that you do pay for the shipping, which we just looked up. It's $8.95 to send this um, any place in the U.S. I'm sorry if it's internet. National. Mom, are you willing to send things international if they send it, the postage to you? I can do it. Uh, I'd have to, we'd have to find out what the postage is. It's quite a bit. It's almost it is, more, it is more a lot. And, and you'll have to fill out custom forms too, Mom. So yeah. I don't know if, you, okay. We um, have done some of that, but okay. So if you're interested in that, um, the book is free. Just pay for the postage. If you want to give another donation along with that, Mom, what will that go to? Uh, that would go to Seek Him First Ministries, which goes towards uh, the future prayer walking uh, across the U.S. And okay. uh, that, would, that would be very helpful. Very yeah. good. Okay. And so you're probably wondering, so how do I contact you and let you know that we want this book? You can just contact me through the Facebook link that I'm going to have below for my um, Go Serve Pray no, pray, serve, go, uh, right? Pray, serve, go. Um, yes, right. <laughs> it's confusing because my mom used those same words for a walk that she did, and I didn't realize it. And and once I did realize it, it was like, oh, I'm using those words because I've been saying those so much with mom's walk. <laughs> so it's hard for me to get them in the right order. But anyway, it's a really cool group. And um, you can contact me through that for this, and I'll put you in touch with my mom and everything. Um uh, and if you, you know, if you have any other questions or anything, you can contact her through that Facebook group as well. Um, you're welcome to join the group if you want to, but you don't have to. Um, is there anything else we want to say before we go, Mom? I think that's it. Okay. All right. This has been cool. Thank you so much, Mom, for joining me. You're welcome. This has been fun. <laughs> all right. We love you all. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.